So I've had a really, really busy week. And the problem is that's, that's my fault. I've got no one to blame but myself for being so busy and just having so much on my mind. And as I mentioned in the last video of this kind of devlog series thing, I want each video to have a particular theme. I think that it's a good chance for me to like answer a question from the community or talk about something. You guys get the point. And so what I've done is I've kind of taken my thoughts, wrapped them into like some ball, and now I'm going to try and push that ball into you guys. Okay, so what, what was so hard about this week? Why, what did I do this week? Hazel is getting to the point where it's, it's getting kind of big. And the problem isn't the fact that it's getting big. I've worked with plenty of large game engines before. It's more so the fact that I wanna do everything. There are so many things that I want to do. There are, th I just want to have a billion features done immediately, like today. I want this engine to just be done today. But unfortunately, that's not how things work. That's not how software engineering works. That's not how, that's not how anything works. And I think that it's ultimately a really good reminder to just take it slow. Because I know that a lot of you are extremely ambitious people. You can, it's very easy to get into a phase where you are just so, you're so passionate about something. You know, nothing else matters. You just want to get it done. You just don't care. I mean, I wouldn't say nothing else matters, but the problem is you can't do it all. You have to realize that if you are a solo developer, or even a small team working on a particular project, you're not going to be able to do it all. And that's a really tough thing to hear, I think, for a lot of people. This is the same reason why we have the whole MMORPG kind of meme of just like new game developers wanting to make extremely ambitious like MMORPG projects that usually take teams of hundreds of people several years, but they just, they're gonna do it, man, because they're gonna keep working at it, they're really passionate about it. And then what happens? A few months or years later, they realize that they just have a nervous breakdown. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm definitely not having a nervous breakdown yet. But I do wanna say that I think it's an extremely important skill to be able to pace yourself, to be able to think critically and to be able to just relax a little bit and say that I will get there eventually. Because if you go, if you go full force into something with just like a reckless kind of, you know, just reckless attitude, like, nah, it's gonna be great, I'm gonna do all of it. You're gonna end up stressed out, you're gonna end up burned out, and in the end, <laughs> it's not gonna be anything to show anyone. So I think ultimately, this is an important lesson for me, it's an important lesson for you, it's an important lesson for a lot of people, to just relax, take a break, and just consistently work. It's a lot better to be consistent than it is to go really hard at something and then burn out. So instead of overworking and trying to do everything at once, just relax, take a step back and remind yourself that you'll get there because I believe in you. Okay, all seriousness and motivational speaking aside, um, the reason why I had such a busy week was because I wanted to do a lot of things in Hazel. I, as I mentioned, it's getting to the point where there's just so many different directions I wanna take. There's so many things, so many large features that need to get implemented and need to get done. And I basically spent the week tackling two of them at once, which was an entity component system, as well as a scripting language and just general scripting support. The reason I wanted to do those two things at once is not just because they need to get done, but because they are kind of tied in together. Like a scripting language and a scripting interface, I'll say, is very, not, it's not very useful unless you have an entity component system because the scripts that you write should be interacting with the components of entities and with entities and with the scene. And if none of that exists, then like, what are you doing? Are you just binding your C++ API to your scripting language so that you can write a 3D renderer in like Lua or something? That doesn't really make sense. If you look at other game engines, usually a scripting language interfaces with entities, scenes, and components. And the funny thing is that's kind of it. You don't need to expose, you know, renderer begin scene to your scripting language. I mean, you can, and that might be useful, but you don't have to, and that's not really the, tra the traditional route because most people are just going to want to manipulate this kind of entity component system that is inside your game engine. I like to think of scripting as just really being a puppeteer with like 
you know, puppet strings and you're manipulating a puppet, you're not really supposed to be able to like write everything that involves your game engine inside the script. You're really just supposed to be pulling different strings that do different things. That's kind of the point. And that's a good way to think about it because that way you're not going to lose a lot of performance by trying to do too many things inside your scripting language. Now, don't get me wrong though. Sometimes it's actually faster to do things inside your scripting language rather than do the whole transition into C++ and then back again and all of that potential data marshalling that you might have to do. But as a general rule, you know, it's really important to define what belongs in your runtime, in your C++ runtime, and what belongs in your actual scripting language. And there is a lot I could say about scripting languages, so maybe I'll just save that for another video. But ultimately, this all began with me not being able to decide what scripting language I wanted. On one hand, I was fairly set on the fact that I would use Lua, because Lua is extremely fast. If you use a jitted kind of version of Lua, like Lua JIT, something that is not interpreted at runtime, it's extremely fast. It's probably the fastest thing or one of the fastest things out there. There's really not much that can beat it. However, the main reason that it is so fast is because it's so simple. It's so kind of limited. The language is extremely straightforward. The actual syntax and what you can do with the language in terms of language features leaves a lot to be desired, as does the core library. There's a lot of issues with Lua. It is fantastic to script small kind of things. It's really good at that. And to be honest, like, you know, I have nothing against Lua in that regard. But the problem is the way that I see Hazel is first and foremost, a game engine that I am making to eventually make a game with. And not just like a little Flappy Bird clone, but like, you know, a, a a big game. And do I want to write my game in Lua? Again, if it's like Flappy Bird, then yeah, sure, why not? But if it's a big game, I don't think I do. And obviously, like realistically, if you're working on a really big game in Hazel, you probably want to use a lot of C++ and that's to be expected. But ultimately, I just don't see myself, I just don't see myself writing a large game in Lua and I want to be able to give people the opportunity to actually write a large game in Hazel without touching C++. So then I looked at Python and Python, you know, I, Python's fine. It's, it's obviously a much more like feature complete, I'll say, or well, it's a language with a lot more features than Lua. It's got a fantastic library. A lot of people use it. The C++ kind of bindings are very good as well. The C bindings are very good. Everything is, everything is great in Python. I, I'm not a huge fan of like the syntax or anything because obviously I'm used to like C++ and C style languages, but it's, it's fine, except that it's slow though. And you know, performance for a game engine is like very important. So Mm. By the way, just so you're with me so far, I basically built a little sandboxed environment and tested out like binding like various like functions, resources, reference counting, all of that stuff between C++ and all of these scripting languages. I literally built like a sandbox environment for each of them and tested them for the purposes of a game engine. I didn't want to integrate them into Hazel straight away because I knew that would take a lot of time, but I did set up like a, a pretty thorough kind of test case to see what they would be like if I had actually implemented them. And then finally, Finally, the language I looked at last was C Sharp. And C Sharp is by far my favorite language out of these three. But the reason I was so kind of hesitant to jump into it straight away is because I know it's fairly heavyweight and I know that Mono has very restrictive licensing. Except for the fact that that last part isn't true anymore. Back when I looked at C Sharp last seriously, it was probably for like Sparky, which is another little game engine that I had. And I knew that like Mono had serious kind of restrictions back then. It was very difficult to actually build Mono like yourself, build the binaries yourself on whatever platform you're going for. You had to go through, like you had to ask them for licenses, you had to ask them for binaries, I'm pretty sure. Like it was like a, it was, it was difficult. The licensing was very restrictive. They didn't want everyone using it for everything. Since then though, I think Microsoft have like acquired them. I might be wrong, correct me in the comments below if I am, but um, Microsoft or something acquired them or at least are working with them for, you know, they're working together. And now it's just like, yeah, man, do, what you, do whatever you want with Mono just as long as you, you know, pay attention to these kind of rules. But like, it's, it's very open. It's very, very accessible now. And that's amazing. And so I'm like, okay, well, I might as well try this out. What's the harm in that? And I did try it out. And it was very easy and it was very straightforward and all the code you can build yourself. And 
It's C sharp. C sharp is my favorite language aside from C++. C++ is probably my, my favorite favorite language. And then C sharp is probably this, my second favorite language. I haven't exactly used C sharp extensively to write games. I mean, I've obviously done some things here and there using Unity. And I know C sharp very well because back at EA, we used it for like all of our Windows based tools, which includes like, you know, all of the tools, including the level editor on like one of the engines I worked at, Frostbite, so Frosted, let all that editor stuff is written in C sharp using WPF. So I have a lot of C sharp experience because I was, I was mostly like a generalist at EA, which means that I basically did everything. And obviously a lot of game engine development is the tools. So I'm very familiar with C sharp. I know a lot about its amazing features, amazing library. It's a great language. And so that's what I did this week. I just slapped it into Hazel. The first thing I did was actually put it into Hazel, the public version, like the, the public kind of Hazel 2D, which is the game engine series. The reason I put it into that is because that's obviously a smaller code base than Hazel Dev, which is the 3D version of Hazel. And I just thought that, you know, let's start there. So I basically looked at various ECS systems. Oh, we haven't even talked about entity component systems at all. This video is dragging on for so long. If you guys want to see more of this, let me know. Maybe I'll make more than one of these videos a week or something because I'm barely scratching the surface of this. I'm telling you, it was a very busy week. Long story short, I jammed in C Sharp into the public version of Hazel, tested that, that kind of worked. I started integrating a little bit of the API and then I realized, why am I doing this? I should just put this into Hazel Dev because that's ultimately like where I want to consolidate everything. I want to have one massive big code base. And then that is what eventually I will write the game engine series videos and like the public version of Hazel to become. So I moved all of that into Hazel Dev. I integrated an entity component system called Ent, e -N -T -T. And again, lots to say about that, but probably save that for another video. And so now Hazel Dev has an entity component system, a scene system, and C sharp scripting support. I mean, I haven't done a lot of the API kind of bindings yet. So the C sharp API is extremely limited, but check it out. So while this might look pretty much the same as last time, maybe a few, few differences here and there just with materials and all of that, I assure you that there has been a lot of stuff that has happened under the hood. So this scene hierarchy panel used to just have like basically some dummy data showing the single entity that we had in the scene and then like the sub meshes attached to the main mesh that made up the entity and the entity really just had like a ref to a mesh and it was all kind of, you know, like the entity class literally just had like a mesh a material, a transform, all of that stuff. It was completely not an ECS. Now, since we're using Ent under the hood, which is an ECS, an entity component system, these are all actually entities. If we click on one of these entities, like so, you can see that we have this properties panel here that lights up. The properties panel shows all of the components that this entity has. So you can see that this entity that I've selected here, it's called test entity. It has a transform, a mesh component, and a script component, but it also has a tag component. That's what this is. And I can easily rename this to like scene or something like that. Now the plan is of course to have like children and parents and like an actual hierarchy here. And then you could expand them by just kind of hitting this arrow here, but we don't support that yet. So there's nothing there to see. And yeah, that's kind of the first major like thing here. We have an actual camera, which has like a camera component and that's what gets picked up by the scene class. That's what you're seeing here. This view is the result of an actual camera component. I don't think it really interacts with the transform at all, but the camera component is what contains the actual camera. I this unnamed entity, I think is just a test of an empty entity. This scene entity, which is in fact, this kind of, you know, the main thing that I can move around here, you can see that as I move it, I can see the translation here. I can also scale it up and down and I can see the scale changing. It's got a mesh component, which at the moment I'm just displaying the file path to that mesh. And then finally, you can see that we have this script component and the script component has a module name example.script. And that is because if I use the arrow keys here, you can see that I'm actually actually moving this entire scene. And that's because, surprise, we have an on update function inside our example script, which is what we saw there inside the script component view. And that is what is controlling this movement. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I actually didn't go anywhere. I'm actually going to record the outro like straight after the, the first part of the video and then record the computer screen like later. Yeah. It's a little, little trick. As I mentioned, extremely busy week, got all that stuff done. I haven't even shown you guys the beginning of all this. I'm super excited to see where all of this is going. I'm just super excited to implement all of this, to be honest. There's so many things in my head, so many things I wanna do. 
and just not enough time. So that's a very good state to be in. Just have to remember to relax and take it slow and not rush into all of these things. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can also help support Hazel and all of the videos and everything I'm doing here on YouTube by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. I am live streaming the development of Hazel Dev weekly for patrons. So if you guys are interested and in, definitely check that out. Huge thank you to all of you for all of your amazing support. It's the only reason why Hazel has come this far. I will see you next time. Goodbye.